Yo, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm going to be taking on Milano in an epic battle of Triff Gaming versus Milano. He's playing a super cool deck that is actually a really good meta called this format. So let's see how this turns out. If you guys enjoyed this video, aren't you guys to smash the subscribe button, smash the like button. Also, check out the playmats down in the description below. These playmats are absolutely insane. Get your playmats right now while you guys can, still for $39.99. They're absolutely beautiful. With that being said, Triff Gaming versus Milano. Let's go. Sleep, bro. You're the most annoying shit talker out of any human being. No one's more annoying than you. But, but, but you're just crazy. That is some good old banter between Milano and Sam, which is going to be uploaded to the channel in a few days. So make sure, guys, to smash the subscribe button so you guys don't miss out. This is an epic. This was an epic grudge match of Milano versus Sam. Now, in today's video, this is going to be Triff Gaming versus milano who's gonna win let's switch spots sam let's switch spots who's gonna win this is milano versus triff gaming now i know that i know milano's deck very well why because i literally took milano's deck and literally played it out of Yu -Gi -Oh locals we switched decks he did well with my deck i did well with his so i know very well on the intricacies of his deck and I, for damn sure, know about the intricacies of mine, which, by by way, by the way, is the best deck in the planet after Pendulums. So here I'm going to go Enchantress. I am playing Brave Splite, which is just so good. It is the two best engines ever made in Yu-Gi-Oh! With a third engine of Board Breakers with zero hand traps in the deck. And just look how smooth this is, bro. It, it's just too smooth. It's adding so much free value. Like, one Fateful Adventure by itself is going to give me four cards. By, like, one, sorry, one Rite of Aramisier by itself is going to give me a token. It's going to give me Griffin. It's going to give me Draco Back to Bounce. It's going to give me a follow-up of Drake, of Faithful Adventure. And it's going to give me uh, two cards on the field to do anything I want with. In this scenario, I'm going to use, use it as a negate. What a lot of people do is they look at this engine and be like, oh, it's just a negate, bro. It's just one Griffin Rider. Who gives a shit about... First off, yes, you're right. It gives you a free negate for one card that's all special summons. Yes, going first. But it's about going second. Going second, what this does, and I did a very cool play over there to protect my uh, gigantic splite with my window. Uh, for Sorry, I opt for Toad here because game one. But uh, to protect with Elf, you guys see how I did that? I just protected it. But anyways, from Valor Imperm. But the Griffin now ensures I get a free negate for nothing. And on top of that, going second, I get two monsters to attack with a 2,000 attack to enter battle phase fast. Draco back to bounce, two monsters to climb into any single charmer, and then eventually silly Naxus code. And it's just fantastic. So here I set these up. Uh, I'm gonna set two traps and I'm going to pass. This setup is, is actually unbreakable. Uh if he dark rulers, that is the downside. But I do have two traps uh to, to prepare myself. Uh post side deck to play around the dark ruler, you go for Gale Dagra instead of totally awesome. And I do get hit with Dark Ruler, unlucky. Uh, here he goes, uh, I'm thinking pretty deep here. So here he is going to activate the Numero Network. And I'm thinking, I'm like, hmm, uh, uh, how do I stop this Numero Network? I, I obviously don't want this Numero Network to resolve. So what I do is this, a very cool play. I use Toad as a, a cost. Toad is a cost. So Toad will trigger as a cost, adding me back Swap Frog. This will allow me to free up the zone, okay? Under Dark Ruler, you can activate the cost of cards at the very, at the very end of it. So I summon Splite Carrot. Spike here is going to eventually negate the Numeron network. And then he's going to go, uh, in this scenario, uh, he's uh, I negate the offering to the Doom. So you can't draw on the... Uh, sorry. So you could resolve the Numeron network. And he's thinking here. He's like, hmm, I could summon four cards, but I want a Dark Ruler. So Dark Ruler, he could up my board and maybe put up some Apoloza. But he knows that because I have such crazy follow-up, he's just going to lose at the very end. Uh, so it's just not going to do much anyways. So what he opts to do here is actually a very smart play. He's going to opt to banish my entire board. So what he's going to do is he's going to summon one of these and summon for the special C1 guy and play around the Nibiru. So he's going to summon this, and what he's going to do is play around uh, this, and in order to do, uh, he's going to, look at this cool play. So he's going to do this to banish my entire field. It's a very cool play, the C1 guy. So what I'm going to do, if you're face, ever facing a deck against this, you have to know I have Droplet set, okay? So uh, he, my, And he has Droplet as well, okay? So uh, you have to think, against Flunder, what do you do? You Droplet send a spell in case they use the, uh, the Flunder spell card uh, that uh, adds uh, any Flunder from deck to hand. 
So what you need to do, I recognize he might play Droplet, so I purposely send the spell so you can't chain his own Droplet. Because if you chain his own Droplet, get his card off the field. See, he had double Droplet. Y'all see that? That was a pro play, which by watching Triv Gaming, you're going to learn these type of things. So just like that, I learned just on this, like, you guys need to keep the, all of this in mind because for that simple play, it saved me the duel. If he was able to out my cards, it would have been a very interesting match, uh, game there. So now we're going to go on to game number two. And I don't know if I'm going first or second. So I'm siding for both. I'm siding for both. I don't know if I'm going first or second. So I'm still siding in a few cards to break, uh, get rid of interruptions. Uh, sorry, a, a few cards to get rid of spell and trap removal. I don't care about his monsters. So I'm siding cards to get rid of spell trap removal while still keeping droplets because it's first or second. I'm removing dark rulers. And I'm just thinking pretty deep. I'm like, huh, I think talents will be useless. You have to really think on matchups. Uh, something else I side out, I side out one salt frog always. I side it out one Shizum and one Gale Dagra here. Uh, I think I actually kind of wanted to put it, like, this is a tough choice. I'm putting in all my Sanctums. I actually think I'm going in first, but at the same time, if I'm going second, I could use Sanctum against him going second as well, because anytime that he puts up in my network, I just scythe instantly. So it could go first and second, whether he breaks, like, both of our decks, I, I decided, I, I, I think I took out the trap tricks, just kept saying that. I don't I forgot exactly what I did here, but in any matchup where you don't know if you're going first or second, you, you must be prepared for both. You must be prepared for both. Uh, here, uh, let's see what he's able to do. Actually, I think the best hop scenario would have been to keep Gale, Dogger, and Chisholm, because if I just have those two and I just search it out, even if I'm going first, I'll, uh, one, Winda outs that entire board, because if I put the Winda, yeah, I'll just still survive, and he won't be able to summon again, so... Uh, he'll still have four guys he needs to not die from the four uh, Numeron guys he's going to bring out. So I'm looking at my veins. Hey, you see those veins? Ah, ha, let's go. Oh, my God. So beautiful. Oh, look at my veins. Oh, my I can't wait to get even more veins. I love veins. Uh, so here I'm going to draw five and Milano is going to set two. So he didn't draw Numeron. He just set two. And set two will just not be enough here against uh, my deck, obviously. So... Uh, I actually write, and one right of him is here outside like everything. Well, you need to play right in your sprite deck, guys. Like, uh, this is just not debatable. I'm going to out, literally, with one card, I out both of his interruptions. I go Draco back, bounce one, Griffin negate the other one. Just like that, bro. One right of him is here by itself. Gets rid of two interruptions and gives me two muscles in the field and a follow-up. If you're not playing right in your deck, you're, there's something wrong going on. This is the best... The right engine is better than sprites. I'm not even joking. This it's a free special summon engine that could be played in almost every single deck. Like this is just so fucking good. Uh, Draco back. I'm gonna bounce that one. I'm gonna grip and negate the other one. I know he doesn't play many hand traps, and he, he's just auto cook. Bounce special the Griffin. GG. That's 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 it. And I have a sprite in my hand. He's, I bounce the summon limit. I have sprites in my hand, and I just negate the other one. That's GG. GG Milano. Still amazing deck, but uh, just not enough for the best one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, pen best deck, Sprite second best deck. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.